All right, remember that uh, 54 control arm video I made a while back? Well, it's time to do work. It's time to match the front. I don't know if you can tell how far it's rising up. We're gonna drop her down. I'm gonna take some measurements on the fender from the fender to the ground and see how we're looking. All right, so we got the front tire off on the driver's side. There's your spring. Gonna have to take that sway bar bracket off or mount off right here, but it's a long bolt, so the whole thing's gonna have to come off. Don't have to touch this at all. That's how you adjust your alignment. What is going on? Um, so here is can't really see it. This is the original control arm. I'll show you the difference right now. I showed it in my other video, but in case you're just seeing. So See how this is all one piece? This whole thing's one piece right here. I think it's starting to rust too, so this is good. This is two piece. And when I had my 54, I drilled out the, the rivets and put in some bolts. So, made these spacers. They're one inch spacers out of aluminum. It was a solid bar. I cut them and drilled them grade 8 bolts and it dropped the wheel about 2 inches. Now I took my measurements beforehand so we can see exactly what happens. So now I'm going to start going to work. I believe that's a 9 16 right there. This bolt right here I used and this was a little big but it worked 1 and an eighth. Trusty impact. Zipped it right off. Those bolts under there, I'm not sure what size they are yet. I think they're probably 916 16s too, because it seems like everything on this thing is 916 16s. And that's it. This whole thing will come right off. Um, hopefully this spring doesn't cause a ton of trouble, and hopefully that shock doesn't um, just get destroyed when I try and take it off. We'll find out here in a sec. All right, so that's where we're at so far. Got bottom shock bolt undone had to slip some channel locks in here and hold the shock while I did this nut because it was not cooperating at all got the sway bar link out and I just found out that even with the drop on those it's only a quarter inch further down than this so that's not cool um, so it looks like I'll be doing these uprights after all I don't know about today because I'm on a time crunch but I will be doing them so now it's time to unbolt those and unbolt that and then this control arm comes right off and hopefully it goes right back on. Alright, so change of plans. I'm putting the spindles on. One of them has a little bit of play in the kingpin. Um, hopefully it doesn't affect anything. We're going to find out here in a few. Alright, so taking these backing plate bolts off which also holds the steering arm right here so I have to ride back out to my storage room where the motor is and pick up the steering arms from the 54 but anyway there are these cotter pins so I was like why will my socket not go in there cotter pins so don't forget to take those out I forgot I had to pull the hub off anyway even though I pulled the drum off so anyway there's four bolts there that all comes off the steering arms right there so, I guess at this point, I'm going to put the new upright on, but then I have to go get my other steering arms so I can complete the job. If I can get the spring back on, that's the next step. Right. There's the original upright. I have to figure out which one of these is the new upright. So, let's see. They both look identical. How do you know which is which? Let's see. Ah, the stops. Okay, so this one has a stop on this side, so that's this one. All right, good deal. Got it. Now you're supposed to get this out. I have no idea. Doesn't matter. I don't care. There's the cam for the alignment. 
There's the other cam for the alignment that came out. I marked that so I can put the same side facing up. So hopefully that works. We're about to find out. Because I'm putting them in. All right, big change of plans. I'm doing the control arms and the spindles, or the uprights rather. So, that's how we're looking right now. And I really hope it all goes back together as easily as it all came apart. Should. Old control arm, new control arm, old upright, new upright. Since now I'm rushing against daylight savings time, I'm running out of daylight. Anyway, that is the 54 upright, 54 lower control arm. That's how much space I have between my sway bar to give you some perspective. Two fingers. So, and that spring just keeps on compressing. So I don't know where my sway bar link go. Well, anyway, I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know if that's gonna fit back in there. So hopefully the whole sway bar moves up and it's all okay once I do this side. But I lost the sway bar link for now anyway, because Doing something so small ends up looking like this. So, on to side two. All right, step one after taking the tire off. Sway bar link. 9 16th ratchet, 9 16th wrench. Done. Second step, disconnecting the shock under there. Also 9 16 If you loosen the bracket and pry it down, it should pop out and you can grab the shock itself with channel locks which is how I did the other side and hopefully how this side works too. All right, so I unbolted this 9 16 off the stud right there. You'll see it when you get under there. Jack the control arm up and you can grab the shock with the channel locks and twist that right off of there, hopefully. Because otherwise that little screwdriver slot is useless. Next thing is to pull the hub off. Now I modded my drums so I can pull the drum off without the hub but I have to take the hub off anyway, so I'm just gonna pull the whole hub as one unit. Because the way my brakes are adjusted, it was really hard to get the other side back on. All right, you got one, two, three, four that have to come off, five eighths. There's a nut on the back, bolt in the front. Almost forgot the tie rod end. You need a big mallet, 11 sixteenths, and a jack stand. All you have to do is smack it here with a hammer a few times. Don't use a pickle fork and destroy your boot. Plus, these are brand new. I just put them on last summer. So, hammer here. All right, the steering arm, that's the old one. That's the new one. Do yourself a favor. There are some spacers right here that make up the difference between the steering arm and right there. They will fall off constantly. Put the nuts back on and then put it on a jack stand so that you don't wreck your brake line. Just like that. Perfect. Now your brake hose doesn't have to be disconnected. You can do what you gotta do. Got these bolts, got those bolts, got the bolts on the bottom, and that's it. So let's see, these are, I believe, this size, whatever size this is, one and one sixteenth. There's just some gunk in there keeping me from going. And these, well, I used a one and one eighth, but it's a little big. Uh, it's a one and one sixteenth too. Okay, then. So that's it. I almost forgot. Don't forget to take this bolt out. Can't really see it, but there's the top of the nut. That's what keeps, it clamps down right here on the seam and keeps your alignment adjuster in place. Don't forget to take that out or that will never come off. All right, so I 
just made a mark on this bolt with my grinder right there so that is pointing straight up now of course it's off to the side but see how it's a V so the V is going to be going straight up that way my alignment pretty much stays where it was all right so I pump grease into this thing all the time look how rusty this was so I wonder how clogged up that zerk fitting was and this bad boy destroyed hopefully I have another one all right so that's it I haven't done the four bolts in the back yet um, I'm gonna lower this and let y'all see what it does to let you know it's not super crazy and as far as undoing the back four bolts instead of doing this bolt right here no freaking way it's coming down slow you ease it down last thing you want is for that spring to come shooting out of there and jam you in the chest it's rolling the jack it's almost done it took about 15 minutes to get this side apart and that's it spring pops out there is a shim I don't know if all of them have the shim mine has the shim and there's a pocket on the control arm for where to place the spring and make sure this end right here make sure that you get that Into that pocket where that hole is right there because if you don't the whole thing's gonna sit crooked all right so I got caught up daylight savings time got the best of me it got dark I was out here with flashlights my neighbor brought his car over and shined his headlights on me um at the fenders it lowered it about three inches give or take a little bit at the front bumper it lowered it four inches and this is almost on the dot so that's where it's sitting now. It looks so much better. It looks like this side's sitting lower, but it's just because the wheel's turned and all that. Um, I have four inches of ground clearance under my Walton's transmission cross member. And I'm going to buy the Hot Rod Works cross member, which is going to raise that. So. That's where we're at. So you have 54 Chevy control arms. Oh, my sway bar is not hooked up. I have to cut the tube down drastically. But that's where we're at, in case anyone's trying to do it.